சார் ஸ்கிரீன் வந்துருச்சா சார் ஆ தெரியுது சோ டுடே वी ஆர் गोइंग टू सी अबाउट லிவர் அனாட்டமி அண்ட் ஃபிசியாலஜி ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் பே ஃபர்ஸ்ட் பேஜ்ல எது இல்ல செகண்ட் பேஜ்ல அனாட்டமி அண்ட் ஃபிசியாலஜில ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஜெனரல் டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் அண்ட் டோபோ டோபோகிராஃபி இதுல வந்து ஃபர்ஸ்ட் லிவர் சாலிட் weight 1.2 to 1.6 kg அதுக்கப்புறம் வந்து லிவர் இஸ் கவர்ட் பை தொராசிக் கேஜ் தி லோவர் பார்ட் ஆஃப் தி லிவர் இஸ் ஈக்குவல் டு லோவர் பார்ட் ஆஃப் தி ரிப் கேஜ் தென் போஸ்டீரியர் சர்ஃபேஸ் ஸ்டாடல்ஸ் தி இன்ஃபீரியர் வேனா கேவா அதுக்கப்புறம் வந்து தி லிவர் இஸ் இன்ஃபெஸ்டட் இன்வெஸ்டட் இன் பெரிடோனியம் எக்ஸெப்ட் இன் கால் பிளேடர் ஃபோசா போட்டா ஹெபடிஸ் அண்ட் போஸ்டீரியர் ஆஸ்பெக்ட் ஆஃப் தி லிவர் ஆன் எதர் சைடு ஆஃப் ஐபிசி இன் டூ வெஜ் ஷேப்ட் ஏரியாஸ் இதுல ரைட் சைடு தி ஏரியா ஆஃப் இஸ் கால்ட் அஸ் பேர் ஏரியா ஆஃப் லிவர் தென் uh the peritoneal duplications on the liver surface referred to as referred to as ligaments so these are the ligaments uh, in this di- diaphragmatic peritoneal duplications are called as coronary ligaments in this co- not audible not audible hello uh, hello kekkuda sir ipo dhan kekkudhu kekkala konjam illa sir the current poichu wifi id aap poichu so vande ipo coronary ligaments so diaphragmatic peritoneal duplications are referred to as coronary ligaments whose lateral margins on either side are called as right and left triangular ligaments from the center of the coronary ligament then uh, from the center of the coronary ligament that emerges the falciform ligament if they falciform ligament apdi keela vandhuchuna anga irukkiradhu ligamentum teres in the ligamentum teres is going into the umbilical fissure umbilical fissure has the left portal pedicle the ligamentum teres is obliterated in umbilical vein usually left umbilical vein runs along the inferior edge of the falciform ligament from the umbilicus uh, to the umbilical fissure the umbilicus fissure is in the inferior surface of the left river contains left portal pedicle on the uh, uh, on the posterior surface of the left liver running from left portal vein in the left porta hepatis toward the left hepatic vein and the ivc is the ligamentum venosum the the ligamentum venosum in the, in the picture la kuduthirukanga it is from the left portal pedicle it is going upwards and to the left port, uh, left um, sorry uh, left hepatic vein till that it is called as in this fissure contains ligamentum venosum this obliterated part of the ductus venosum then uh, come to the normal development and embryology in this uh, actually the developing liver is a common progenitor for a biliary tree and pancreas in this there are some molecules which is regulating this are fibroblast fibroblast growth factor uh, bone morphogenic protein wnt tissue growth uh, tissue growth factor beta have been elucidated is the the liver primordium begins from the third week third week of the development and uh, it is di- it is derived from the hepatic diverticulum or liver bed the connection between the hepatic diverticulum and the future duodenum uh, the connection is called as bile duct in this bile duct there is an outpouch that becomes a gall bladder and cystic duct then be, then uh, hepatic sinusoids are formed by vitelline uh, and umbilical veins நெக்ஸ்ட் பேஜ்ல பிக்சர் கொடுத்திருப்பாங்க பேஜ் நம்பர் த்ரீல இதுல வந்து சென்டர் இஸ் இந்த சென்டர் டியோடம் போத் சைட் போத் சைட்ஸ் ஆர் விட்டலின் வெயின்ஸ் அண்ட் அம்பிகல் வெயின்ஸ் தீஸ் ஃபார்ம் த லிவர் சைனுசைட்ஸ் இன் திஸ் இஸ் இன் திப்த் வீக் தென் கம் டு த பி இன் திஸ் தம்பிகல் வெயின்ஸ் பிகம் ஆம்பிடேட்டட் ஆல்சோ த ரைட் umbilical vein become uh, it will it will become disappear in the sinusoid the center part of the sinusoid is called as ductus venosus in later part of life means uh, third the, uh, the blood which is flowing from uh, left umbilical vein it is bypassing the sinusoids only going into the ductus venosus and the portion of inferior vena cava is the land Uh, the, 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 the primitive layer uh, the primitive liver plays a central role in fetal circulation the vitelline carries the blood from yolk sac 
and to the sinus venosus and ultimately ultimately form the network of vein or the forget and it the, it is the pin to the sinus the telin vein becomes in future portal and superior mesenteric vein and splenic vein and the hepatocardiac channel in the it will be hepatic vein and to hepatic vein as a hepatic vc voice breaker in the last para repeat panna konjam சோ இப்போ கேக்குதா சார் ஆ இப்போ கேக்குது ப்ரிமிட்டிவ் வேர் சென்ட்ரல் ரோல் இன் ஃபியூஷன் அதாவது இந்த நெக்ஸ்ட் பேரல சொன்ன விட்டலின் வெயின்ஸ் தட் வில் தட் ஃபார்ம்ஸ் தி சூப்பர்சென்ட்ரிக் வெயின் இப்போ ஸ்ட்ரீனி வெயின் அண்ட் போர்ட் போர்ட்டல் வெயின் தி ஸ்ட்ரீ வெயின்ஸ் அண்ட் எபோ மேல சொன்ன ஹெபாட்டோ கார்டியாக சேனல் வெயின் இட் வில் பிகம் ஹெபாட்டிக் வெயின்ஸ் அண்ட் ஐசி ஒன்லி <laughs> left side on excellent left side on both median and left hepatic vein join up then adult liver then uh, adult liver is a complex system of numerous cell types including hepatocytes cholangiocytes neuroendocrine cells hepatoprogenitor cells everything then uh, the last uh, come to the resident macrophages known as kupmer cells it contains 80% of macrophages in the body and then functional anatomy Uh, in previously the falciform ligament is considered as to separate the right and left lobe nowadays there is a functional anatomy by cross sectional imaging is used uh, the functional anatomy of the liver is composed of eight segments each supplied by a single portal tract and portal uh, which contains portal vein hepatic artery and bile duct the terms right liver and right liver are preferable than right right lobe and left lobe because there is no external mark that allows identification of the right and left uh, left lobe the main incisura contains middle hepatic vein which runs from the anterior anterior posterior diaphragm gallbladder fossa to the left side of macava so this is called as cantilever line uh, it divides into liver and right and left then right incisura right incisura divides the uh, liver and anterior and posterior segment anterior ligament uh, anterior segment contains segment 5 segment 8 the posterior segment and then segment 6 and 7 then left liver has visible uh, visible fissure along the inferior surface called as umbilical fissure the ligamentum teres contain the uh, the ligamentum uh, teres containing the remnant part of the umbilical vein runs in this fissure and uh, the falciform ligament continues with the umbilical fissure and ligamentum teres the umbilical fissure is not a incisura here by the umbilical fissure we don't divide the left lobe screen share panniko mute mute eduthuko alla sir screen eh சரி ஓகே சார் சொல்றா கேக்குதா இல்ல ஆ கேக்குது ரெக்கார்ட் ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணுது அந்த அம்பிலிகல் ஃபிஷர் இஸ் நாட் எ சிசுரா அது வரைக்கும் தான் என்ன ஸ்கிரீன் வந்துருச்சா ஆ ஸ்கிரீன் விசிபிள் வாய்ஸ் கொஞ்சம் பிரேக் ஆகுது
ரெக்கார்ட் ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணிக்கலாம் நான் ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணிட்டேன் சார் Okay. Then usually uh, in left lobe there are two segments. In uh, left lobe there are three segments. Uh, picture number four four fifty four point five. This left lobe in left lobe blood there are sector no solvanga section no solvanga. In when we are calling it as sectors, the left lateral segment contains only two. when we call it as left paramedian it contains 3 and 4 when we call it as section the left lateral contains 2 and 3 then left paramedian contains 4 but in right side la both sectors and section are means same same lobes 5 uh, 5 plus 8 6 plus 7 but when epo uh, left lobe la solum bodu sector is different section is different sector only A left lateral lobe only two, paramedian three and four. Section in section left lateral lobe one or two and three, paramedian is uh, fourth lobe. Then at the hilum of the liver, at the hilum of the liver, for a right portal tight has a short extra hepatic pus, which is usually one to one point five centimeter before entering the substance of the liver and branching into the anterior and posterior sectoral branches. in left portal triad there is a long extra hepatic pus which is usually 3 to 4 cm and runs tran transversely along the base of the segment 4 uh, and the, this connective tissue is known as hilar plate so whenever we want to approach the uh, right and left hepatic duct we have to go through the hilar plate the continuation of the left portal triad runs uh, anteriorly anteriorly and caudally in the umbilical fissure and give branches to the uh, second and third and left recurrent branches to the segment 4 on the right side then come to the important point the caudate lobe uh, many uh, for true and false questions can come in this in this caudate lobe is a it is located in the posterior surface of the liver it embraces ivc on its ventral surface and it lies posterior to the left portal triad portal triad inferiorly and left and middle hepatic vein superiorly இது என்ன சொல்றாங்கன்னா கம் டு பிகர் ஃபார்ட்டி ஃபோர் பாயிண்ட் எயிட் சாரி பிப்டி ஃபோர் பாயிண்ட் எயிட் இன் திஸ் தேவ் டெபிக்டட் ஹியர் யூ கேன் சி தார்டேட் லோ ஆக்சுவலி திஸ் இஸ் தைட் சைட் அண்ட் திஸ் இஸ் லெப்ட் சைட் அபவ் இஸ் ஆன்டீரியர் அண்ட் பிலோ இஸ் போஸ்டீரியர் ஃப்ரம் திஸ் த கார்டேட் லோ இஸ் எக்ஸ்டெண்டிங் ஃப்ரம் லெப்ட் சைட் டு த ரைட் சைட் through the para cap between the left portal uh, triad left portal triad and ivc uh, in between it is going and it is attaching in the seventh lobe so this process is called as caudate process the uh, when uh, this is sandwiched between the left portal uh, portal triad and ivc it is called as para caval portion then the left in the left uh, segment one is called as the big lobe this is called as segment one proper as pigeon lobe Uh, in between here you can see i have given a round mark here in this there is one ligament is called as ivc ligament or caval ligament or macucci ligament in this ligament uh, from fibers from the caudate lobe it is coming and fibers from the liver uh, liver seven is also coming and below part is diaphragm so this is usually a ligament called as macucci ligament or ivc ligament but in 50% of the people this ligament is replaced by hepatic parenchyma so when we do surgery when it is a hepatic parenchyma then we have to be careful then we have to use pusa instrument or harmonic to separate the tissue this is uh, this part is usually not visible actually when it is visible then we have to uh, retract the uh, right lobe of the liver then we can see the this ivc ligament then uh, come to the blood supply and uh, blood supply and biliary drainage the vascular inflow and biliary drainage to the caudate lobe come from both right and left hepatic right and left pedicle the right side of the caudate and the caudate process largely derives portal first venous circulation the portal venous supply from the right portal way and the left side by the left portal way then arterial and biliary supply and the right side it is by the right posterior pedicle not by the 
right pedicle it's a right posterior pedicle in left side it is supplied by the left main pedicle then uh, this is the this is what i told the caval ligament 50% of the people the fibrous compound uh, fibrous compound is composed partially in the parenchyma is called as uh, caval ligament another one one mark is radial slope usually uh, liver is it is uh, congenital anomaly is uncommon but complete absence of left liver is there is a possibility is there then radial slope radial slope is a tongue like tissue extending inferior to the right liver also when the tongue a tongue of tissue it is extending from the left liver is called as papillary process it is not in book then portal vein then portal vein is the maximum blood supply to the liver 75% of the hepatic flow and uh, and it it provides 50 to 70% of the liver oxygen requirement then uh, but it has the tendency to accommodate high high flow and low pressure but portal vein has the capacity to accommodate but hepatic artery doesn't have the accommodation uh, capacity then length of the portal vein is 5.5 to 8 cm 8 cm then diameter is 1 cm then it is cephala cephala to its formation behind the neck of the pancreas then portal vein runs behind the first portion of the duodenum then it did enter, enter into the hepatodiadenal ligament where in hepatodiadenal ligament the arrangement of the uh, portal vein and uh, bile duct and hepatic artery the, uh, the anatomy is very important it's a repeated mcq the the portal vein is below then on the right side anteriorly it is hepatic duct then right uh, left side anteriorly it is hepatic artery then you can see the diagram 50.4 54.4 here uh, the liver segments are divided by middle and uh, right and left hepatic veins given then come to next para the left branch of portal vein runs transversely along the base of the segment 4 and into the umbilical fissure where it gives off branches to segments 2 and segments 3 and feed back branches to segment 4 the left portal vein also gives posterior branches branches to the left side of the caudal lobe as like same right side of the portal vein also gives some branches to the it gives four segments plus caudal lobe then uh, they have given portosystemic collateral what are like uh, uh, stomach and distal esophagus short gastric vein left gastric vein then uh, umbilical uh, caput medusa it is by umbilical vein and abdominal wall vein then hemorrhoids by superior mesenteric uh, by superior rectal vein uh uh then retroperitoneal communication yields make abdominal surgery hazardous like because of retroperitoneal vein which is connecting into the portal systemic uh, portal systemic portal systemic uh, circulation then anatomy of the portal vein is most consonant and has much less variation than biliary so most consonant in uh, in this is portal vein and most uh, vary most most variable is biliary and here if it is a portal vein problem the most most commonly in 70% of the individual there won't be any then there won't be any anatomical uh, variation there will be a, like a right and left portal vein then left uh, right side has two anterior and anterior and posterior veins if it is any uh, variation the most common variation is portal vein trifurcation in this left portal vein uh it will divide into three branches that is left portal vein the right anterior portal vein and right posterior uh, portal vein there will be three branches the second most weird common variant is right posterior portal vein originating as the first branch of the portal vein this can also envision as the right anterior portal vein arising from the left portal vein these are the two variation account for majority of the variations in portal vein then very rarely they have given some pulmonary vein and uh, pulmonary vein enter into the portal vein also they have given also come can, there will there will be a chance of congenital absence of the left branch of the portal vein in this situation the right branches supply the left branch then hepatic artery hepatic artery supply the 25% of the, the liver then it provide 30 to 50% of oxygenation then uh, the hepatic artery it is usually from the from the celiac tract which is just arising which is just arising below the aortic diaphragmatic hiatus and gives up three branches splenic artery left gastric artery and common hepatic artery then it runs in the superior part of the pancreas then right side of the lesser omentum then
then where it ascend toward the hepatic hilum and enter into uh, port uh, enter into portal uh, enter into portal hilum then there are another three branches gastroduodenal artery supraduodenal artery right gastric artery then it will become a proper hepatic artery then left hepatic artery usually also gives of a middle hepatic artery branch that heads toward the right side of the umbilical fissure and supply segment 4 so segment 4 is also supplied by middle hepatic artery so middle hepatic artery is a branch of left hepatic artery then it then calot triangle calot uh, calot triangle and uh, cystic artery anatomy given then uh, accessory vessels and replaced vessels okay satya middle hepatic artery is a branch of left hepatic artery ah yes sir nanu sonna Okay, okay. 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 Middle hepatic artery is a branch of left hepatic artery, and it supplies only segment four. Then, uh, then accessory vessel and replaced vessel. Uh, in this accessory vessel, there will be two vessels. In replaced vessel, there will be only one vessel without in the that is the anatomical variation will be there. Then entire uh, in anatomical variation, the entire hepatic arterial system can originate. can originate from the superior mesenteric artery in this most commonly right hepatic artery uh, usually usually come from superior mesenteric artery the percentage is very important repeated mcq it is 11 11% to 21 percentage then hepatic vessels replaced by superior mesenteric artery run behind the head of the pancreas posterior to the portal vein and porto cavus space so in this they can ask one mark in two ways like directly they can ask the percentage or during some procedure uh, actually usually the hepatic artery is above the portal vein but when it will become a uh, accessory or uh, replaced it will go posterior to the portal vein so when we do a pringle maneuver like below that we can see the pulsation so we can so if they ask then that will be a right uh, hepatic artery from the superior mesenteric artery then left hepatic artery usually come from the left gastric artery it goes uh, the percentage is 3.8 percentage to 10 percentage it originates from the left gastric artery then courses within the lesser omentum and heading toward the umbilical fissure then they have given cystic artery cystic artery can arise from the proper hepatic artery or gastroduodenal artery in this uh, cystic artery can arise in the any uh, point of proper hepatic artery then here they have given the portal vein anatomy uh, in both the right and left portal vein can give cardiac lobe uh, separate uh, uh, venous supply then uh, the portal vein the, the, there will be some direct branches to the segment 4 then this is hepatic artery anatomy then uh, middle hepatic artery is a branch of left, left hepatic artery is given then hepatic veins there will be three hepatic veins right left and middle in this uh, one one important point is the left and the left and middle hepatic veins usually join intrahepatically and enter into the left side of the ivc as a single vessel so there won't be any two vessel the, the, it will enter into the single vessel the, the umbilical vein then come to the next point the umbilical vein is an additional vein that runs under the falciform ligament between the left and middle middle veins and usually empties into the left Uh, left hepatic vein so this umbilical vein is the responsible for caput medicine so it is joining into the left hepatic vein then biliary system biliary system is the most commonly seen various anatomical variations um in this usually superior sir inge inda kilo or point kuduthirukka parunga here along this intrahepatic portal uh, portal pedicles the bile duct branches are usually superior to the portal vein whereas the hepatic artery branches run inferiorly adu epdi sir hepatic artery branches run inferiorly actually hilum la when uh, the bile duct bifurcates la so bifurcate aagumbodhu left and right uh, uh, hepatic duct ku inferior ah dhaan left and right hepatic artery irukum so artery ku superior ah bile duct irukum இது also intrahepatic portal pedicle எப்படி தா இருக்கும் intrahepatic னா அவங்க அந்த ஹைலம் ல இருந்து உள்ள போறத தான் மீன் பண்றாங்க ஓகே ஓகே நெக்ஸ்ட் பேஜ் 
in its transverse position the left hepatic uh, duct drains one one to three small branches from segment 4 so direct branches to the segment 4 by left hepatic duct then another one important point is there are there is a two right branches right branch there are that is called as posterior sectoral branches and anterior sectoral branches this uh, posterior sectoral branches runs horizontally in the posterior direction so anterior sectoral branches runs vertically repeatedly as as, as mcq then cardiac lobe cardiac lobe has uh, has its own biliary drainage which is usually throughout the right and left systems however in up to 15 percentage of the individual it is drained to the left system only as because it has the big lobe in left side and 5 percent to the right system only then common bile duct it measures 10 to 15 cm 16 6 mm in diameter then common bile duct runs along the right side of the hepatodiagonal ligament to the right side of the hepatic artery and anterior to the portal vein then it joins then it joins to the pancreatic duct with or without a common channel and then enter into the second portion of the duodenum through a major papilla vater here there are three uh, sir moon sphincter non sphincter sir bailey la four nu solliranga so bailey follow pannu uh, so here they have they have given three sphincters so uh, they have given sphincter polydocus bailey la sphincter polydocus na vena solrana superior and inferior polydocus sphincter nu solran இங்க வந்து ஒரே இதான் ஸ்பிங்டர் கோல்ட் டோக்கர்ஸ் சொல்லிட்டாங்க இதுல வந்து சர்க்குலர் மசில் தட் ரெகுலேட்ஸ் த பிரைட் ஃப்ளோ அண்ட் பில்டிங் ஆஃப் த கால்பேடர் சோ ஸ்பிங்டர் கோல்ட் டோக்கர்ஸ் இஸ் அ சர்க்குலர் மசில் தென் பான்கிரியாடிக்ஸ் பான்கிரியாடிக்ஸ் ஸ்பிங்டர் தட் பிரசன்ட் டு வேரியபிள் டிகிரி விச் சரவுண்டட் பை விச் சரவுண்ட்ஸ் த இன்ட்ரா டியூடனல் பான்கிரியாடிக் டக் தென் ஸ்பிங்டர் ஆம்புலே விச் இஸ் மேட் அப் ஆஃப் லாங்கிடியூடனல் மசில் சோ ஸ்பிங்டர் கோல்ட் டோக்கர் சர்க்குலர் மசில் தி ஸ்பிங்டர் ஆம்புலே லாங்கிடியூடனல் மசில் தென் கம்ஸ் டு தென் normal anatomy which we know which we know that only we have they have given like a cystic plate that is an uh, the size of the gallbladder is 10 cm and 3 to 5 cm wide then common most common anomaly is a phrygian cap then portion of the gallbladder between the infundibulum and cystic duct refers to as neck then first portion of the cystic duct is usually tortuous and contains mucosal duplication referred as the folds of ester the function is filling and emptying of the gallbladder then uh, ductal anatomical variation idla vand most common anomaly appdin kettaanga na the right and left the right posterior sectoral duct directly arising from chht is the most common the c the c is the most common most common and 20% idla c1 da vand individually most common the second most common is trifurcation the the above one is the above one is 57 percent which is the normal anatomy then uh, then they have given anomalies of gall bladder which is given in uh, 54.14 then blood supply of the uh, uh, blood supply of the cbd here the blood vessels uh, runs in 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock portion these vessel direct from the superior pancreatic duodenal right hepatic or cystic or gastro duodenal or cystic are in the above in below gastro duodenal and retro duodenal arteries there will be multiple small branches supplying in and around the, in and around the cbd the venous drainage the venous drainage of the the venous drainage of the uh, gallbladder it is usually empties into the veins that drain into the bile duct and flow directly to the portal vein the nerve supply nerve supply there is a sympathetic nerve sub, sympathetic and parasympathetic sympathetic it is from t7 to t10 parasympathetic is from bilateral vagus nerve these sympathetic fibers usually pass through the celiac ganglia before giving up post ganglionic fibers to the liver and bile ducts here in this there is a anterior hepatic plexus and posterior hepatic plexus anterior hepatic plexus is formed by right sided celiac ganglia and right vagal nerve then posterior hepatic plexus is formed by left vagal nerve and left sided celiac ganglia and because of this referred uh, in acute dysfunction of the liver thus and thus the liver capsule can result in right upper quadrant pain which may be referred to the right shoulder 
through the phrenic nerve innervation of the diaphragmatic peritoneum. The lymphatics, both liver and GB, as it has most, mostly same lymphatic drainage, that is hepatodiadenal ligament. The most the nodes around the hepatodiadenal ligament. From here, the lymphatic drainage usually continues along the hepatic RG to the celiac lymph nodes and to the cistern agile. Cistern agile. It will go through like that. Then microscopic anatomy. Uh, this is simply theory only. In this, there will be a there will be a central terminal uh, venule. In this central terminal venule, it is surrounded by four to six terminal portal triads that form the polygonal unit. In between, in between the terminal portal triads and the central hepatic venule, hepatocytes are arranged in one cell thick plates surrounded one each one side by endothelium nine blood filled sinusoids. Blood flows from the terminal portal triad through the sinusoids into the terminal hepatic venue. So bile is formed within hepatocytes and empties into the terminal canaliculi, canal which from the lateral walls of the intercellular hepatocyte, these ultimately uh, went, uh, go into the bile ducts and flow toward the portal triad. So this is the one way. From the portal triad, the blood goes in, goes into the central venule. The another one important thing is it has three zones. There are three zones. It it has different enzymatic uh, enzymatic makeup and nutrients and oxygenated blood. Here uh, I have mentioned zone one, zone two, and zone three. Zone one is periportal zone. Which the uh, zone one is periportal zone. It is an environment rich in nutrients and oxygen. Zone two is intermediate zone. Zone 3 is perivenular zone. So from zone 1 to zone 3, there will be less in nutrients and less in uh, oxygen taking capacity. So when it goes to the perivenular, the, the central part is a venule. Uh, around, the central, uh, around the perivenular area, there will be less nutrients and le less oxygen supply, which is most commonly lead to centrilobar necrosis in hypotension. Because zone 3 is more susceptible, more susceptible to decrease in oxygen delivery. Then hepatic microcirculation. In hepatic microcirculation, the, port uh, the portal branches provide a constant flow, but the, flow, uh, the minimal flow into the low volume system. The arterial branches give the pulsatile flow, but the low, uh, but low volume flow that enhances flow into the sinusoid. Hepatic arterial branches terminate in the plexus around the terminal bile ductules provide nutrients. Then local control of the blood flow, local control of the blood flow and sinusoids. Sinusoid is likely depends on the arteriolar sphincter and contraction of the sinusoidal lining by endothelial cells and hepatic stellar cell and portal myofibroblast. Bloods, blood within sinusoid empties directly into the terminal hepatic venules at the center of the functional lobule. This process results in unidirectional flow of blood liver from zone one to zone three. Here, the hepatic sinusoids, the next uh, MCQ is the hepatic sinusoids are 7 to 15 micrometer, uh, uh, micrometer wide, but it can increase in size uh, up to tenfold. This yields low resistance and low pressure. Usually, the pressure in this is 2 to 3 mmHg system. The sinusoidal endothelial cells accounts for 15 to 20 percent of the total hepatic cell mass. Then come to the next space. This is this is called as space of this. In this, sinusoidal endothelial cells are separated from hepatocytes from the space of this. So here uh, in this picture, uh, picture fifty four point one six, we can see between the two uh, sinusoidal linings, we can uh, we can see the hepatocytes. In between hepatocytes and sinusoid, there is a space called as space of this. So this is an extra vas the extravascular fluid compartment into which hepatocytes project microvilli, which allows proteins and other plasma proteins from the sinusoid to be taken up by the hepatocytes. Here there will be multiple large fenestrations will be there because of that there will be in and out of uh, proteins and movement of solutes will be there. Then come to the next para, Kupmer cells. Kufma cells are also called as macrophage and uh, macrophage cell, uh, macrophages. Also, it is derived from the mono, macrophage monophage, uh, monocyte system. Are regularly, uh, sorry, irregularly shaped cells 
also line the sinusoids and insulating between endothelial cells. Cucumber cells are phagocytic and can migrate along the sinusoids to areas of injury. So it plays a major role in trapping of the foreign body, foreign substances and initiating inflammatory process. But these cook muscles also has a major histocompatibility complex to antigens, but it is not effective as a periphery, a periphery other macrophages, but it is it, it has MHC2. Also, the lymphoid cells also has a natural killer cells and uh, natural killer T, CD4 T and CD8 T cells. The another cell is ito cells. Ito cells is a it is a storage for vitamin A. In this Ito cells are stellate cells. In this acute or chronic hepatic liver injuries, hepatic stellate cells are activated to a myofibroblastic state associated with morphologic changes. Morphologic changes, cellular contract contractility, decreases in intracellular vitamin A and production of extracellular matrix. Ultimately, these stellate cells play a central role in development, development and progression of hepatic fibrosis and cirrhosis. So when we give treatment, antifibrotic treatment, we have to target these cells. Then hepatocytes. Hepatocytes are complex multifunctional cells that make up to 60% of the hepatic cellular mass. Here in this hepatocyte is a polyhedral cell with central, uh, central spherical nucleus. In, it is on either side, there will be a blood-filled sinusoids will be there. It has a lot of functions like uptake and storage, release of nutrients, glucose, fatty acid, lipids, and mechanism. To carry out these functions, plasma membrane of the hepatocyte is organized in a specific manner into three specific domains. These are phage. The phage is the one. The, the three specific domains. In this, there is a sinusoidal membrane, lateral domain, and canalicular membrane. These are the three domains which is important for the function of the hepatocyte. In sinusoidal membrane, is exposed to the space of this space of this to the to, uh, and has multiple microvilli that provide surface spe specialized in the active transport of substances between the blood and hepatocytes. In lateral domain, it exists between the neighboring hepatocytes. It functions as it, it function as intercellular communication. In canalicular membrane, it is a tube containing microvilli formed by two opposed hepatocytes. These bile canalicular are sealed by zona occludens, also called as tight junctions. So, main important mechanism of canalicular membrane or zona occludent is to prevent the bile leak. So, there will be a tight junction. So, bile won't come out of them. So, the uh, the bile canaliculi from the ring around the uh, the bile canaliculi form a ring around the hepatocyte that drains into small bile duct known as canals of herring. Canals of herring. Then the canalicular membrane contains adenosine triphosphate ATP, ATP dependent active transport systems that enable solutes to be secreted into the canalicular membrane against the large concentrate gradients. And the hepatocyte contains 100 mitochondria per hepatocyte, occupying approximately 20% of the cell volume. Then mitochondria thousand, generate. 1000 mitochondria, MCQ, 1000 mitochondria. 1000, 1000, 1000, 1000 mitochondria, either MCQ. A mitochondria generate ATP through the oxidative phosphorylation. It is essential for fatty acid oxidation. Then another one monoclonal antibody, HEP PAR1, that is hepatocyte paraffin 1, that identify as a unique antigen to hepatocyte mitochondria and is widely used to identify hepatocytes or hepatocellular neoplasm as immunohistochemical examination. Then uh, an extensive an extensive uh, system of interconnected membrane complexes made up of smooth and rough endoplasmic reticulum or Golga apparatus collectively called as hepatocyte microsomal fraction. So these hepatocyte microsomal uh, fraction has some function like uh, synthesis of structural, uh, structural proteins, then uh, glucose metabolism, fatty acid, cholesterol metabolism, everything is given. Then finally, hepatocyte also contains lysosome. These, what is lysosome? These are intracellular that single membrane vesicles that contain number of enzymes. These vesicles store and degrade exogenous and endogenous substances. Then functions. In functions, in function, the liver is the center of metabolic homeostasis. Then energy, nothing. It is not 
basic things only given there are two major sources of energy that liver produces one is glucose and acetoacetate acetoacetate is derived from beta oxidation of fatty acids then functional heterogeneity this is important functional heterogeneity the i told there are three zones in the uh, three zones before for zone on zone to zone three that comes here for example here Uh, the cells located in periportal zone are exposed to high concentration of substrates thus uptake of oxygen solutes is great yeah, yeah. okay then the sinusoid located in the periportal zone also differs from the sinusoid located in the zone 2 and zone 3 here the sinusoid in the periportal zone are narrower and more tortuous and facilitating increased uptake of substrate by the hepatocytes in this area in contrast sinusoids in zone 3 have larger fenestration allowing uptake of larger molecules the sinusoids are variable in form of function then next by next para glucose uptake and release bile formation and synthesis of albumin and fibrinogen these function take place in periportal zone that is zone 1 whereas in zone 3 glucose catabolism xenobiotic metabolism and synthesis of alpha 1 antitrypsin and alpha phytoprotein occur in perivenous zone then urea cycle enzymes also present in zone 3 then come to blood flow as uh, i told in portal and hepatic artery anatomy it is same only the one important point is hepatic blood flow is decreased during exercise and increased during ingestion of uh, ingestion of food so carbohydrates have most profound effect on hepatic blood flow then hepatic arterial pressure is representative of systemic arterial pressure but the portal venous pressure generally usually 6 to 10 mm hg and sinusoidal pressure is usually 2 to 4 mm hg so that the blood flow will be easy then hepatic blood flow is regulated by various factors one of the factors is muscular sphincter that is located in an inlet and outlet of the sinusoid as i told before then also some factors autonomic nervous system circulating hormones bile salts and metabolites also uh, regulate this muscular sphincter also specific endogenous factors also regulates this blood flow like uh, insulin glucagon histamine bradykinin prostaglandin nitric oxide many gut hormones including gastrin and secretin cholecystokinin then the next para uh, it increases in increased increases in hepatic arterial blood flow accompanied by decrease in portal portal vein flow but the opposite does not occur so as i told only the portal vein has the accommodability uh, component but in hepat hepatic artery it can't accommodate also the another one important point it is build up of the experimental evidence has suggested that the build up of adenosine in the liver plays an important role in this hepatic arterial compensatory response then bile formation uh, in bile formation the physiologic role of bile is twofold the first one is to dispose the substances secreted into bile the second is to provide by bi entire bile salts aid to the digestion of fats then the concentration of inorganic solutes in the bile uh, bile in the main biliary tree resembles that of plasma so the components are the uh, same as that of plasma it can come as true or true or false then uh, osmolality bile approximately 300 milli osmol per kg then major organic solutes in the bile are bile uh, bile acids bile pigments cholesterol and phospholipids mm. then come to next 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 one approximately 1500 ml of bile secreted daily in baby it is given 1000 i think here it is given as 1500 Uh, as much of this secreted by hepatocytes into the cannabinoid bile acids are transported from the sinusoidal blood into the hepatocyte by atp requiring active transport in this bile flow it is well, the, there are two types one is uh, uh, bile acid dependent flow then uh, bile bile acid independent flow here bile bile flow has a linear association with bile acid secretion known as bile acid dependent flow in bile flow can also occur near absence of bile acid secretion that is called bile acid independent flow uh, a bile acid independent flow can be result of biliary glutathione secretion also then certain ducts can also secreted in uh, biliary biliary which can concentrate like septic axon 
then enteral hepatic circulation here there are there is a primary bile source folic acid and quinodeoxy folic acid which is produced from liver and subsequently conjugated by glycine and taurine glycine and taurine into the in the hepatocyte then when it goes into the uh, uh, intestine the intestinal bacteria to uh, to form the secondary bile acid deoxy deoxycholic and lithocholic acid so most commonly 95 90 to 95% of the bile which is from the intestine it will go back to the liver only 5% it will excrete then bilirubin metabolism in bilirubin metabolism the page is sir in bilirubin metabolism uh, there are two types early phase and late phase in early phase the uh, the heme breakdown accounting for 20% of bilirubin in the form of hemoproteins heme containing enzymes and occurs within 3 days of labeling within radioactive uh, radioactive heme in the late phase late phase of heme breakdown accounting for 80% of the bilirubin is from the senescent red blood cells uh, this occurs approximately 110 days after administration of radioactive labeled heme they have checked then heme is initially broken down into green bilirubin so heme to bilirubin by heme oxygenase then bilirubin to bilirubin by bilirubin reductase then bilirubin albumin complex so wherever the bilirubin go there will be it will be combined with albumin so when it is not combined with albumin there will be toxicity of the bilirubin so bilirubin has a long been uh, long been known to the toxic hormone and is agent responsible for neonatal encephalopathy then cochlear damage secondary to severe unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia that is called as kernic kernic stress also a number of disorders can result in unconjugated and serum hyperbilirubinemia including neonatal hyperbilirubinemia and increased bilirubin load caused by hemolytic syndromes also inherited syndromes unconjugated inherited syndromes or regler nager syndrome then gilbert syndrome then disorders presenting with serum conjugated hyperbilirubinemia bilirubinemia include cholestasis dubin johnson and rota syndrome then carbohydrate metabolism in carbohydrate metabolism only one point that is a, the liver contains up to 65 g of glycogen per kilogram of liver tissue then they have uh, given usual fasting state what are all given fasting what will happen first uh, there will be a glycogen breakdown then it then it will go to fatty acid then it will go to ketone like that then they have given about cori cycle cori cycle is in the first fasting state during met anaerobic metabolism lactate is produced then largely from it is largely from the muscle then this lactate go to the liver it will come into into pyruvate then this pyruvate the glucose comes then we can use the glucose then lipid metabolism second second paragraph carbohydrate metabolism la the liver contains up to 65 grams of glycogen per kg of liver daily it's given okay okay second paragraph third line hmm yes sir then lipid metabolism lipid metabolism by first fatty acid so fatty acid how fatty acid are synthesized fatty acids are synthesized in the liver during the states when glucose is excess so there will be a excess glucose so it will convert it to glycogen still there is glucose then that glucose is converted into be converted will be uh, fatty acid so this fatty acid is accumulated it will be staying in staying in adipose tissue so liver is the predominant source of synthesized fatty acids so when there is a excessive fatty acid it will go it will cause the steatosis of the steatosis of the liver when it is associated with chronic inflammation and more advanced in cases steatohepatitis this then it will go to steatohepatitis a number of conditions have been associated with steatohepatitis such as diabetes steroid use and starvation obesity extensive administration of cytotoxic and uh, chemotherapeutic agents then protein metabolism protein metabolism like uh, liver is a central and critical to the body's nitrogen balance and amino acid metabolism then vitamin metabolism in this there are fat fat soluble uh, vitamins a d e k are mainly uh, uh, mainly dependent on liver in this vitamin a the eosinophils cellular cells storage is a storage form of vitamin a then coagulation also they are, they have uh, they have told about vitamin k so vitamin k and vitamin k dependent uh, coagulation factors that is 27 910 then in this factor 7 has the shortest half life of the coagulation factors then we it can be identified by pt and inr then metabolism of xenobiotics uh, then xenobiotics there are two reaction one is phase 1 reaction and phase 2 reaction 
phase one reactions are oxidation reduction and hydrolysis then increase polarity and water solubility then phase one phase one reactions occur in the cytochrome cytochrome for p450 system then phase two reaction generally act to create less toxic and less active transport this is a phosphorylation reactions then regeneration liver regeneration in this liver regeneration the important one mark so what is the rate of the liver regeneration regeneration here they have given normally quiescent hepatocytes rapidly enter the cell cycle after partial hepatectomy so maximum hepatocyte dna synthesis occurs in 24 to 36 hours after partial hepatectomy but in uh, other cells other cells of liver dna synthesis occur in 48 to 72 hours 2 to 2 to 3 days most of the increase in hepatic mass in rodents which they have checked it is 3 days after partial hepatectomy and usually almost it will the liver regeneration will complete at 7 days so for uh, uh, hepatocyte it is 24 to 36 for uh, other cells it is 48 to 70 70 hours so what are the factors that is responsible for liver degeneration these are hepatocyte growth factor epidermal growth factor transforming growth factor insulin and glucagon and cytokines uh, cytokines to uh, cytokines like tumor necrosis uh, tumor necrosis factor alpha interleukin 1 interleukin 6 then future developments there is no one mark then assessment of liver function in assessment of liver function there are three uh, there are three components one is routine screening one is specific screening one is quantitative test in routine screening they have uh, every, they have just elaborated the lft so what are the, but they have elaborated the lft the conclusion point is those there are uh, there are uh, elevated components but there are another system also it is involved like alkp it is also involved in bone like that they have given so they have comp- they, they come to the next uh, next one specific diagnostic test in this specific hepatitis serologies are important to determine the presence of viral hepatitis so in autoimmune antibodies like in primary biliary cirrhosis example we can see anti mitochondrial antibody in uh, primary sclerosing cholangitis uh, that is primary biliary cirrhosis this is primary sclerosing cholangitis it is anti neutrophil so example ex- uh, neutrophil is an inflammatory so in cholangitis is an inflammation so there will be in, uh, anti anti neutrophil antibody will be increased also like uh, alpha one antitrypsin and ceruloplasmin are in uh, are, uh, can can be seen in alpha one antitrypsin and wilson disease like afp cea also specific diagnostic test in this they come to the next para here amino firin breath test amino firin breath test is based on cytochrome 450 clearance of red, uh, for clearance here radio labeled amino firin is given then they have Uh, check uh, checked for that amino firin uh, breath test is uh, like a yeah, breath test other uh, first uh, amino firin putchitaanga adukapra ad p cytogram for p450 vechi ad evlo clear agudhu appdine paakranga in breath test measuring radio label co2 as a breakdown product of amino firin is performed after administration at a specific time uh, but it is it is clearly not an effective test to detect subclinical hepatic dysfunction so substrates substances such as antifirin caffeine can evaluate liver function in a similar way and lidocaine clearance it's like amino firin clearance there is a lidocaine clearance in this lidocaine clearance is dependent on blood flow and a complex distribution process but a measurement of one of its metabolites mono uh, monoethyl glycine xylidate so though it is difficult by measuring this component we can come so easily then come to the next one galactose elimination this galactose elimination test it is based on the liver stool the liver stool in phosphorylating galactose and converting it to glucose the rate at which galactose is eliminated from the blood stream can be used as a measure of hepatic function then come to icg that is indocyanin green is a dye which is removed by the liver and carrier mediated process and excreted and excreted into bile without metabolization so this is the only test that has been shown to have some prognostic ability in cirrhotic patients under undergoing liver resection so next come to the nuclear imaging nuclear imaging usually it is based on the uh, it is having advantage of providing simultaneous morphologic 
simultaneous morphologic and physiologic morphologic visual and physiological quantitative functional quantitative functional information about the liver so this is not only helps quantity quantitate the liver function but also helps determining the distribution of the function so thus regional and different uh, regional segmental differentiation allows specific function assessment as the future remnant liver so nuclear mass nuclear imaging we can use technetium 99 galactosyl human serum albumin scintigraphy and technetium 99 meprofenin hepatobiliary scintigraphy we can use so rent rent difference is one on the icg ku nucleus can can difference abhi no icg on the nama stress panna bodu whole liver paakalam so but nucleus can la uh, if example left liver left liver la on the nama future uh, liver remnant irukku abina and specific ah paakona left liver ku mattum paakona na nama nuclear imaging ku polam but indocyanin green la paathamna nammal whole liver oda idu dhaan theriyum then quantitative test then very very important chart that is child q classification uh, it is a repeated question the table column is given here uh, page number 1444 sir idula vandu idu idu thappu illa sir idu kuduthirukiradhu okay sir தான் <laughs> 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 நமக்கு <laughs> 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 19 செகண்ட்ஸ் 18 செகண்ட்ஸ் அது டெய்லில இருக்கு நினைக்கிறேன் ஜீவன் அது என்ன ஞாபகம் இருக்கா ஆமா டெய்லில வந்து 17 ஆமா அது அது நான் போட்டோ குரூப்ல அனுப்புறேன் அது மட்டும் தான் பாக்க மத்ததெல்லாம் ஓகே தான் the last point the best evidence of portal hypertension is hepatic vein which pressure is higher than 10 mm 10 10 mm hg which has been shown to correlate strongly with post operative liver failure hello sir recording stop